Alright, this is episode five. Holy shit, was this a good one? <laughs> I, I the think Fisk this is, Strikes Back. Uh, the, the, Fisk Safiri. So far, this is my favorite. Uh, it has pretty much every character, and they all get a pretty fair amount of time dedicated to them. Uh, there's a lot of twists and turns. Shit starts to go down. Like, shit's getting real. There's surprises with all sorts of characters. There's a lot of development for, for a lot of them. It's just... It's just a really fucking good episode. Um, it, it's the one where uh, uh, Kingpin has a girlfriend and she's fucking nuts like him, so it's great. That's uh, the thing I love most. Yeah, uh, you know, and what I like, this episode uh, sets up so much that you think you know what's going to happen because you've seen it in a million other shows. And throws in so many good twists and turns. I mean, you're even hearing, like, well, I bet this is going to happen, or that's probably going to, oh, they're going to do this. And it's like, they don't! They <laughs> Wrong, do, sir! Yeah, Wrong. they throw in all these other twists in there. Um, the one thing I kind of do, I said, you know, okay, well, she's either dead, or she's going to be crazy, too. And it's like, oh, she's crazy, too. That is so much more interesting. Yeah, and the, the show did, because having read the comics way back in the day, I want to make something clear. You call me the expert on Daredevil. Compared to you, yes. I didn't say you're an expert. I just say you know more than I do. Uh, no, you like first episode or something we reviewed. It's, I think you used the word expert. Not an expert. Uh, I haven't read really any comics since the way early '90s. So, um, but knowing what I do know about Daredevil, I know the characters. So it's a testament to the show that that whole dinner scene. I still was like, where are they going with this? Because I'm not a hundred percent sure. And that goes back to that previous episode where he took the Russian's head off because when he says, you know, why did you bring the gun? Why is it in your purse? Like, uh, no, well, what I, kind I, of gun is yeah, that? What kind of, yeah, yeah, what kind of gun is that in your purse? I, I choked. Like, I couldn't breathe for a second because I'm like, oh my God, is he going to kill her? Like, I, that, you, and knowing what I know, I'm like, I wouldn't think so. But at the same time, I was just like, I don't know for sure, because the show just kind of feels like it could do anything that, that after whole, that earlier scene. That whole dinner scene was both so uncomfortable, but so engaging and fascinating. It kept pulling me in like I just wanted to know more about this guy, but at the same time, I kind of didn't want to know, you know? It's like, I I'm legitimately kind of afraid of this guy, but I'm so intrigued by him, too. I find it hilarious that, like, we have way less courage than the woman going on the dinner date. With oh, I wasn't fucking go. Yeah, yeah. No, like, he, to go. actually, he was great. Like, he he just kept getting it. He's like, man, you're crazy. Wrong, girl, wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, she is crazy. Yeah. Uh, no, but that's the thing. See, that, sorry, it's not even a matter of courage. It's that this is kind of what she wants to. I mean, when she sees those explosions going, she's like, oh. Like, you know, she's on the same page with him. You yeah, know, Vanessa, so. Vanessa in the show is a very interesting character. <laughs> Um, and I love, you know, I was talking earlier about how this show runs on juxtapositions. Um, this is a big one, uh, because we're basically given, there's like a yin-yang going on. As one set happens with the heroes, something else happens with the villains, and they offset each other. So, in the case of Daredevil, Claire is very much like the... Do you hear how you sound? Do whatever it takes. Like, I don't know if I could fall in love with somebody like that. I don't know if you should. Meanwhile, you have the dinner date scene right after that with uh, the Fisk and Vanessa where it's the exact opposite. She's kind of into it. Yeah. And he, of course, you know, definitely wants her on board. So it's this interesting play between these two sets of characters. I'll say this, he knows how to pick them. Uh, Kingpin, <laughs> it's like, of all the people, just, well, she's kind of pretty. Maybe she's fucking psychotic and wants to be, like, with me in my crime lordness. And, yeah. Uh, well, and I love, <laughs> um... I love when the when the city explodes, that American Gothic moment where it's the two of them standing just together. Like and, work, yeah. yeah, and she's just like this, and they're both staring out, and then it does a reverse angle on that, so you see them from behind as if they were staring at a painting. The city's on fire, <laughs> yeah, and it's I mean, like they're looking at a work of art. Well, exactly, like how they, they did look at the work of art when they first met. Um, you know, and admiring just this great, you know, and even when he said when they first met, you know, it makes me feel alone. It's like, you can't get the idea. Yeah, they kind of are alone, but they're alone together now. When he <laughs> says, I don't like to be in public, and this taps into that thing, it's everything about him is control. 
If he's out in public, he doesn't have control of the situation. He wants to remake the city from the ground up. It's just manipulation, manipulation, control, control, control. He just wants to control everything mm -hmm. around him. Um, well, and you see the fear in him constantly, which is so intriguing. Yeah. I, I, every time I see him, I'm like, I don't know if I like the, uh, you know, you see him doing the business dealings, I'm kind of like, I don't know if I like the kind of quivering, almost afraid, looks like he's almost about to cry thing, but it's like, y you still see it, no, he just, he's got it kind of under control, and through all this and stuff, it's like, we know where he is, we got it, you know, he's like, no, no, he's, well, he's got it. I've seen some criticisms out there, I've seen people who are just like, I don't like him, because, like, he, he looks worried, or he's just, uh, like, acting weird, and I, like, I, I want the, the ultimate kingpin who's just always got it together and this and that. It, the scariest thing on the planet is somebody who has fear, but has learned to master it. And the, the scariest thing on the planet is a psychopath who has fear, but has learned to master it, because that fear helps drive them, and that is this guy. Yeah, he has fear. Yeah, he has this, but you can see him get it under control and you know and the few times he doesn't it doesn't manifest itself in oh i'm scared like he's always got that but he's always mastering that it manifests itself in i'm gonna take him on the fucking head off mm -hmm. um that's scary yeah. That's way scarier to me than some other villains who are just like, I'm just all powerful. Like, that's the, it. The thing, if I saw this guy, like, if I was a criminal, whatever, and I saw this guy and the way he talked, like, at that, uh, whatever, at the taxi place and stuff like that, I mean, I would kind of be like, I don't know, I don't know if I'd be on board with this guy, I'll give him a chance, but because he has proven himself so much, I would be like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing, it's and he clearly just has that it under he's under proven control. himself, it's that there is something intimidating about him, that when he does have it together... Like, it's something about D'Onofrio's performance, he kind of just stares through you. Mm -hmm. Like, he just gets this, like, he'll, he'll look away and he'll have those moments of fear, but then when he returns his gaze, you can just feel, like, the heat from his eyes, like, whoosh, like, burning a hole through you. You know what the fear also shows, I mean, when he's doing those dealings, is that it shows, bizarrely enough, kind of this honesty. I mean, when he went to them, it's just like, you know... I it, I killed him with, uh, you know, my car and stuff like that, and uh, I told him that the man the mask did it, hopefully that'll buy us some time. I want to move past this as quickly as possible. And so, I mean, there is sort of this strange calculating way that's like, you know, yes, I know this is the situation, and, you know, I apologize for my lateness, but, you know, I think it is best if we stick on this, everything is the same, everything, you know, there is still sort of this honesty to what he's doing. Well, and, and that's the scary thing about him is... He's a person who can use reason and logic, who that you could, in theory, reason with, but is also an insane psychotic that can snap at any second. That, to me, is just way scarier. Um, but, yeah, you know, and, like, at the beginning of this episode, when they say, it's the man the mask who killed your brother and stuff like that, I mean... I thought I had this whole thing pegged. Okay, they're going to be chasing him down, and they're going to be saying, you're the one who did it, and he's going to say, I didn't kill your brother, and he'd be like, liar, uh, just like in the movie. And uh, But no, they pretty much... I, I mean, okay, the guy's still alive by the end, but I mean, like... He tells the people the truth. He's like, but we gotta keep this secret from, you know, Vladimir time. It'll buy us time and everything. And then you see him kiss Rosario Dawson. It's like, well, okay, it's, I'm glad they sort of sped this out because this usually be about, again, half a season later before they do this. And then in the exact same episode, he's like, she's like, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah, you probably shouldn't. And it's just like, man, we just sort of jumped there too. Like every place I thought this Very. was gonna go tightly written yeah i mean um, it's like i just so love it when they're like hey you thought we were gonna do this that you've seen a million other shows no we're gonna throw you something different we're gonna throw a nice spin on you think the woman is you know probably gonna be in danger the one dating it but it's like you know no she's totally on board and so there's like so many the, the uh black guy well uh, she's smart the with, thing with about the vanessa man, too you, you, you think he's yeah. gonna be you know he's gonna betray him and he's on the right side but no no he he was paid off he's you know got all that figured well, out the, too the thing about vanessa too like you said she's totally on board the other thing i like about her is she's smart like she says like did you really think i didn't know what you do yeah no i was like, like, and that's like, why, like I had, all these times you're about to say this character almost can't, from the beginning yeah when you say this character can't be so dumb. Or when they walk into yeah. the, the law firm and she's like, oh, I did, we'll have this cell before the elevator comes down and they're talking. And, and all these characters, you're thinking, like, they can't possibly be this dumb. And they're not. And I think he gets off on it, too. The fact that she's smart. If you notice something, the three people he has the best interaction with so far, Vanessa, 
and I think he gets off on her intelligence. Wesley, which is not a sexual relationship, but let's be honest, they're like kind of like a, There's a soulmates of some sort. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I love that relationship. It's a Frodo. It's a Frodo them. Sam like British officer and his like lieutenant kind of like uh -huh. an assistant. Um, you know, we've seen that a lot from. You know, Lex Luthor has had his in the animated series, and then I also Xanatos and Gargoyles. Yeah. Um, so it's like that those people that are so on the same page. It, it's yeah, not I like quite those sexual, yeah. but it's they, yeah. they are definitely going above and beyond Call of Duty. Yeah, <laughs> and the other one is Lady Gal. Mm. Like if you notice, he yeah. treats Lady Gal with such respect, and you—it's very clear early on that Lady Gal is a. Step above the rest of them. Yeah, like she's got um, figured out. The she's Japanese laughing. guy like, is no, no, mysterious, I, I but the this, Russians this. are kind of dumb. Leland's just a worm. Yeah, the way she holds herself yeah. and everything. She just so. Yakuza yeah, yeah. is just yeah. very business, but you get this idea that Lady Gao, it's like there's a real brain here. Like, and he seems to be attracted to these brains mm -hmm. in his operation, whether it's, you know, love life, business life. Uh, friends, he referred to Wesley as his friend. So yeah, I think he gets off on it. Like mm -hmm. I think that's part of the reason he's attracted to her. Well, and yeah, and see, I think that's what makes him so interesting too. Again, is that it is that you know it's not just for advantage. There's a legit respect for these people that have just worked so hard and, and stayed a, a several steps ahead of the game because that's what he wants to do too and that's what he admires and he wants to see. He's like, I need these people, but I also really admire well, these Well, I think people. after a while too, there may be just the, the very basic depression of, God, I'm surrounded by idiots. Like, because he's running a, a bunch of idiots. Like, you could, there's a reason the Russians go first. Yeah. Like, he's got them pegged. It's like, these guys are with cannons. I don't know what they're doing. So, um, yeah. I'm trying to think what else happened. Oh, Foggy and uh, Karen Page. Yeah, no, they got uh, they, they got a nice nice chemistry going on there. Um, like I said, I, I like I like him so much more when he's not doing the you know, dude, what, cha. I like it when he's smart. I like it when he's charismatic. I like it when he's you know, I, I don't like when he's the doofus that much. I mean, except when he's doing the romantic stuff, at least he kind of plays off the well, you know, what, what can I do? I'm kind of a doofus, like. But not quite bad romantic comedy doofus, you know, it's yeah. like it's believable enough. It's not something like he's the most suave person well, in the world. And this, so kind of this was a great episode for Foggy, because not only did we have the date scene, but the scene where he tells Marcy off. That's why I think he's the best. That's why uh, I think he's the yeah, most. Yeah, like he just he just shut her down. And it's like, hello, lawyer in the building. <laughs> like, um oh, I should say, like earlier when you were asking. Um, you know, they're just starting out and I was confused. This episode was the reason because I was thinking back to that and I remember this episode I was like, did he work at that from first? I had forgotten he had only interned yeah. uh, with Matt and then they went and did their own thing. So um, that you, question's You know, the, the one thing is it, funny because there's a great shot where they, they got the blind guy in the car and the camera sort of shifts around and there it, it's actually sort of a paranormal activity shot. It's like, there's Daredevil, goes by, then circles around again and he's gone and stuff like that. And I, do re I see what you're saying about Batman because I was saying to myself, God, I love this character. I just wish, when I saw that, I was like, I kind of wish that was Batman there. Because don't get me wrong, it's like, he's so cool. And I'm only talking about the design. I wish there was something as cool as Batman with the long ears and the cape and stuff standing there. But we, we still got the black mask. And even when he evolves to whatever, the red mask with the little horns and stuff, it's still not that great a costume. I mean, it's like, it can be a great character, but it's still not that phenomenal I'd be, a costume. I'd be very curious in a bizarro universe if DC did Spider-Man and Marvel did Batman. Because this, to me, just again like when they think out of the box it gets really incredible like mm -hmm. the shows that got running now are complete opposites of what's going on in the movies i think it's more interesting yeah um so yeah i i love this one i love it just throwing so many good twists so many good developments about the characters uh shit's going down it's not taking forever to get stuff going i mean there's a four huge buildings pretty much blew up you know, and, and they were watching it. It was visually interesting as well. Well, and it's the, uh, you know what it reminded me of? Uh, it was the Daggett plan from Batman the Animated Yeah, it reminded me of that, They try to yeah. blow up Crime Alley, and I'm like, oh, it's that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it was a direct ripoff. I just, like, I had flashbacks to that episode. I was like, oh, blow up a poor neighborhood with people still in it. Kind of douchey. <laughs> but hey, Vanessa thinks it's hot. And the, <laughs> the, the, the last thing I'll say is that, you know, I was really having issue that any time he would cut a guy, I would just be like, Man, does that just 
I mean, I know he's, like, on the edge and stuff, but that, that does not seem superhero-y by any, you know, that's something maybe the Punisher would do, like, just a total psychopath. But this conversation that she had with him, now I can kind of see where it's playing in, because it's, even with Batman, really, like, I think in every, okay, I haven't seen every incarnation, but, like, the movie and TV show incarnations of Batman, they would say, he's walking the line, and I'm like, uh, just kind of the vigilante and that he would kind of, you know, rough people up or whatever. No, 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 but no, this no, one, no, I'm no, like, no, I can see him, no, like... let's separate, let's separate a couple worlds here. Nolan films, yes. That was, that was the thing that I found. It was kind of interesting how they did it, but it definitely was not kind of the Batman I uh, wanted. The animated series is a little more, like... The noir comics, after they softened it a bit, like, uh, not the goofy sort of, but... Definitely softened kind of noir. The Burton films, though, like the early, the, those first two Batman and Batman Returns, he's like over the line. He'll just kill criminals if he wants. He fucking threw Johnny no. Dobbs off a building no, before no, no, that no. movie started. Well, that that's what they claim. We don't know if he actually did. Oh, come on. But, but probably didn't. No, okay, okay, no, but here, no, took a walk off a roof. <laughs> no, but here's <laughs> the on. thing. Like, even, even with traditional superhero, like Luke Skywalker shoots stormtroopers. When they're shooting at him, you kind of get it. There's something about cutting a guy and it's like torture. It is torture. Oh, yeah, no, and, okay, I see what you mean. There's definitely more... <laughs> this this superhero is way more torture-y no, than any incarnation of Batman we've seen. Yeah, I'll no, give you that. No, but, but that's what I'm saying. Killing, but I will say that, but that's always where I think like that's like walking the line when you're doing this stuff. But you know he's doing it for a good cause, but it's like, it's fucking torture. And you know, oh, even I agree. like yeah, well, no, but that's what I really like where in this one what she's saying, I don't think I can be in love with a guy who is so close to becoming what he's fighting. In this, I see it. With Batman, it's always like, even though I understand the arguments that they sort of make, it's like, you don't really feel it. It's like, no, crime fighter, you get it. It's like, I legitimately get uncomfortable whenever he's, like, interrogating a guy. I mean, and but you find out that is kind of the point. That is the purpose of it. I guess my thing is, it's... Uh... <sighs> Maybe I'm just psychotic. I just, it's kind of always what I kind of wanted out of Batman, which is we kind of dress it up and try to pretend it's not crazy and fascist. And like now Batman, particularly post Nolan, like it's feeling like, oh, it's just about justice. And he's got rules this, rules that. And I'm just like, if you're going to be a crazy ass vigilante, just go full fascist. Like this, this guy doesn't care. And I think it kind of makes it more, into, I mean, I shouldn't say that he does care, but it makes it more interesting because he has to grapple with that. Hmm. Whereas the the Nolan Batman in particular was so bound by these rules. Well, no, hold on. I will Unless say in, was in Dark Knight, he cell did. Phone in Dark Knight, he, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. He clearly stepped over a line. But yeah. again, but that's it's a like very it's, no, you know, it's Batman. That's an intellectual to, sort of. Correct. That's an intellectual sort of rule. That's like the NSA. Like, you know, it's like well, I might be violating people's, you know, rights by listening in on their cell phones. And I'm like, okay, like there's a difference between that, which I don't agree with either. And um, I'm gonna cut you if you don't tell me where this asshole is. Very much against I mean. what goes on in our own frickin' government, you know, with spying on us. Very much against it. But yeah, there's there there are different degrees. There's a difference between that, like, I'm spying on your conversation, and, like, I'm gonna shove a knife in your trigeminal nerve and just dig into you. Because, like, that's what every single fight, it's the same thing. It's like, tell me why I want to know. No! <laughs> Like, tell me, no! Yeah, and they make it look like it hurts. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's there's a huge difference. It's like the yeah, difference between... If Batman's yeah. listening to my phones, you know what? It's Batman. I'm sure he's not going to be like, ooh, I'm going to find you. It's like, no, it's he's going to stop it's, the Joker it's the or something. Difference Where between this guy, it's like, spying, yeah, he yeah. really seems to be walking that line. It's the difference between um, spying on people with their cell phones and waterboarding. They're both really bad, but they're two different things. Yeah, like, correct. Own, and yeah. and with, uh, with this, like I said, it's like, if Batman waterboard someone I'd be like holy shit this guy's like really I don't know this doesn't seem right where but he's listening to a phone and it's like okay yeah it's not right but it's fucking Batman you know come on you know, we trust him with this it's like again it's it's fucking torture it's, it's you're crazy like it's it's one of the more crazy superheroes I've seen probably since the Keaton days but, no, but, but they de but they definitely show that you you definitely see why and you see this world and uh, the other thing I really like we're talking about dumb characters doing dumb things you think it's like because the last episode, guy, it, you know, impales his eye on a spike just for saying the guy's name. So this guy says, I'm like, oh, well, there went 
all that build up in suspense, whatever. But no, the cops are like, your turn. Yeah, you chick chick bam. Cops yes, are on the payroll. Got it. Okay, that's that's perfect. Because I'm thinking to myself, man, we just let that die. No, you spun it around, and it was all part of your plan. And I, I fucking love that. They've set up so well how <laughs> difficult this is gonna be for Murdoch to and Murdoch and friends. That should be a sitcom. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to do this. And what the stakes are, like when when Karen and Ben and Foggy and um, why am I blanking on her name? Claire and Murdoch, like these are the stakes that every single thing is stacked against you. The cops, you got the various mobs, you know, you've got politicians like on the payroll and this and that, like you know, financiers, even the good people, you know, like you saw with the. Uh uh, the wife of the guy who died, I mean, she should... Who no, took the settlement. Yeah, I'm just going to take the settlement. And it's it's kind of like, with this world they create, it's like, even though you may not agree with it, it's like, you see why. You just see why. Yeah. Uh, this environment they created is just so creepy and disturbing. I mean, it's right up there with, like, any, you know, Breaking Bad or Game of Thrones environment where you're just like, oh my god, you just feel so alone. And it just makes, you know, what Murdoch has to go up against even... Bigger and grander, and it also not necessarily justifies, well, but makes you understand yeah. why he does these terrible things like torture. And I will give credit to DC uh, and Nolan. This is what made Dark Knight work. Like yeah. it was that sense of dread in Dark Knight that drove me like nuts up the wall in like a good way of just like, oh my god, there's police on the payroll. The Joker has access to all of these things. Yeah, you've got the mob. It's like no matter what Batman seemed to do. He always just kind of seemed fucked, and like that's something that this I think I don't know if it intentionally borrowed from the Nolan films, but something that it grasps is but it, how but to it, do that just as well. But it doesn't, it doesn't go Dark Knight Rises where he's constantly like fucked idiot every other <laughs> turn. It's like this guy is making advances and he's adapting, he's trying to learn, but at what cost? You know, where in Dark Knight Rises he just you know. Dumb turn after dumb turn after dumb turn. We're here. This guy is actually like, yeah. Sometimes they're ahead, but then he'll sort of catch up too. I mean, he's obviously getting on their nerves. He's obviously. Oh, I think enough up, time has passed that people don't bring up Dark Knight Rises as the great Batman movie out of that. Series. Oh, you'd be shocked. <laughs> really? Like better than <laughs> they'll, Dark they'll come out, man. They'll come oh, oh, really? the Dark Knight. No, but, no, but they, they, they'll come out. They'll come out. I don't um, hate that movie as much as you do, but I, I still would no, rank the I, Dark Knight, Batman Begins. No, but there's Dark still people that don't see why, you know, I necessarily don't like the movie. And I'm just like, just when you see it done well, and you see it done like, man, you just admire this guy. But at the same time, you're so on the fence with him, too, with some of the stuff he's doing. It's like, this is what I wanted to see in Dark Knight Rises, and here it's being done. That's why I think instead of just complaining about what's done wrong, we should cheer when it's done right. So, yeah. That's a uh, great episode. What probably my favorite so far. I uh, I hope they get even better because yeah, I'm excited, man. See you at the next one. There it is.